Hi everyone, thanks for coming back to my channel. I am your fave Nurse B. In this video, we're gonna continue our Nurse Entrepreneurial video series. I am talking to Anisha from Reflections by Zaina. She creates badge rails, that's what she's most famous for, but she also creates really beautiful passport covers, duffel bags, items for sorority. She does custom items. But in this video, we're gonna talk about how she went from working as a nurse and then also having her creative business. And then also talking about her philosophy behind being a nurse entrepreneur and that she believes that nurses should not be giving up their bedside job or their nursing job to go right into nurse entrepreneurship. So let's get right into this video in the comment section let me know what you want to ask Anisha this is a video series so make sure you go watch the other videos I'll have them linked down below as in today's video I want you to introduce yourself what do you do in healthcare your title the type of work you do and then we can go even more into your actual uh, nurse entrepreneur business sure sure thing so I'm Anisha and um, eclipsed 40 years old last year <laughs> I have been um, nursing for 18 years it'll be 19 years completed in october uh, and all of my nursing has been in obstetrics believe it or not some part of women's health uh, i started in labor and delivery my all of my clinical experience has been labor and delivery and a part of them uh, i've traveled as a labor and delivery nurse um, i've done home health as a labor and delivery nurse um, i've done clinic work in women's health clinic as a, as a labor nurse, but in a more of a um, kind of well woman's capacity, assisting the physicians there. So it's it's a very colorful, you know, it's niched, but it's extremely colorful <laughs> as, as far as everything that I've, I've been able to do. So at what point did you transition into your own business? I'll say that I've always had the entrepreneurial spirit. Let's start there. So I've always wanted to do something of my own, you know, no matter what it was, I've always wanted to do something else, no matter what I was doing. So even before I became a nurse, I was sold Mary Kay. I, I, as a nurse, I had an eBay store. I did like women's clothing. Like I've always, it's always been with me. And so being a nurse as long as I was and raising daughters, because I had my two daughters and they're like my, their mom kind of creative and you know, I'm a real creative person. Um, and I didn't necessarily want to get into entrepreneurship as a nurse in nursing things, if that makes sense. I'm very creative and so I, I work with a lot of other creative nurses that don't really quite know how to translate that away because everybody's like, oh, well, you can know you could do provider and that could be a side hustle. You can be CPR, ACLS or, you know, you can teach uh, fetal monitoring and all of those things are great, but these are creative folks and we want like to create. And so you kind of want to step out of bounds with that. And nobody really helps people along. Nobody really kind of incubates them um, so that they can kind of step out and have a little bit more information as to be a creative nurse and not necessarily side hustle with something in nursing. So um, my daughters came to me because they were drawing. They're, they're older now. Um, but three years ago, of course, they would come show me their art. And they, you know, one, one daughter is like a digital artist and she does, she plays the violin. Uh, she's my older daughter, Anaya. And then I have a younger daughter, Zaria, who loves to draw and has been drawing since she was four. And she has, is really, really, really good now. And so she would bring me, you know, they love anime because their dad's an anime lover. And um, so we, we watch a lot of anime and they draw kind of that anime style. And But there's not a lot of representation in anime. There's not a lot of representation like dark skin, big poofy hair. And so when they drew, drew, brought me what they drew, you know, these are little white girls. And that's all they saw. And I was like, this is kind of, you know, this is that impressionable age. And I really want them to understand that before they hone their craft, you know, they need to, I want them to get comfortable seeing themselves in art and drawing themselves in art. And so that's kind of where I started. I started, my Zayna heads were actually like seven or eight inches and I was doing full blown artwork and stain and decorate. Um, for art and I wanted them to get comfortable just at the very beginning of seeing themselves in that light, artistic light and not always feeling like they had to draw white characters. And mm -hmm. so that's where my business came from was my my desire to just throw something else into the market 
that represented black women. And the badges took off, <laughs> the badges took off on their own because somebody bought one from me, shared it in a black nurses rock group and <sighs> blew up. Blew wow. up, blew my business wide open. The power of social media. I'm telling you, like one share, like they, it was unreal. I was, my Etsy shop kept cha-ching it out. It was like PTSD in one of the best ways because <laughs> I was so, you know, me and my husband are like, is that the TV or is that the phone? What is wow. that? I had to take off work. I had to take off work so that I could paint. Oh. So, in this nurse entrepreneur series, we've been talking a lot about how a lot of nurses want to leave bedside and start something new. Okay. But your philosophy is there's a way for nurses or any type of healthcare professionals to have a creative outlet outside of healthcare, and you can still keep your bedside job. That's kind of like what you want people to understand. So can you go more into that philosophy? Yes. So I kind of come to the realization being an entrepreneur with a family with children um i primarily carry like health insurance and you know all that all that heavy hidden stuff that you absolutely want to you know provide working at a hospital here in texas is pretty decent insurance and so that's kind of where we you know you have those responsibilities in a marriage you know you doing this and i'm doing this right so um my husband does day to day for our business here at home and i of course stay plugged into the hospital setting it allows me access to my audience and also because of my experience i do you know carry the insurance and things like that well as an entrepreneur everybody's kind of running first of all first of all when you're younger um it's a little bit easier to be mobile and i'll say that it's a little bit easier just to, to build if you don't have children but there are a lot of us who are in it at the best side and we still want that creative outlet. We want a side hustle that allows us to be creative, but we don't necessarily want to just run away from the clinical setting, you know, straight away. Um, I know a lot of programs kind of sell that mentality, but I can tell you the reason why I say don't run away is because you're learning already so many things you can pull into the business and the entrepreneurship realm with you. There's so much that the hospital setting and dealing with people in general can teach you at the bedside that you can really get a really great um, kind of boost when you decide you want to start a business. Many businesses are not started and people leave their job in six months or a year. Like you've got a whole separate uh, set of goals that you have to build your business, become profitable, and then become profitable enough to sack away money so that you can walk away from your position and still keep your same standard of living. And that that's something that folks don't necessarily fully grasp when they start entrepreneurship. The, the true cost of leaving your job as a nurse is a lot of money. You really need to be doing very well. And more many experienced nurses can walk away from the best side because they're taking experience with them or they're taking an advanced degree with them and they're taking ex, you know, these these jewels away. But this is after many years. This is not after three years or four years or five years. It's been 18 years for me and I've gone through many businesses and I know my job very well. And so that allows me a sense of comfort and I'm not learning anything new uh, and obstetrics, it allows me to seriously build my business and still go to work and be completely okay at work. So, so what about for the people who they're starting a business, they're working in healthcare and they feel that, that pull, you know, you're at work and you're like, I could be doing this. Yeah. And I, I, go, and I go through that. <laughs> I certainly go through it like I got emails and you're trying to get and I think that's really kind of how humans work. Um, when you become busy and in that pool, I, I'm the type of person because I'm actually working with a few nurses just while I'm at work and we discuss business a lot because they see me in business. Uh, at work, and they've seen my shops online, and a lot of people didn't she even know they were it, buying she from me. Crushing it. People didn't know they were buying from me, <laughs> so it felt like meeting a celebrity. Somebody told me it felt like I was meeting a celebrity because I have your badges and I wear them and I get them. And so 
you know, we have talks, you know, we have talks because I have someone who likes to do jewelry. I work with someone who loves baking. These are creative outlets. These are not nurse related outlets. And everybody kind of wants to use the best out as, as an expendable skill, but it's really not. I mean, you really are learning many things that you can take with you. So my my advice to a someone who's getting that creative pull is to um first of all because <laughs> nurses are so creative sometimes we can be a little flighty and like you know ideas can come shooting out of the top of our head yeah same way and you go from here to here to here to here to here to here i can do this 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 this, this because we do it already <laughs> i thought that was just me oh my goodness I thought that was just me. no ma'am no ma'am i am the queen of uh the idea mill i can tell you that I am haunted by things that I could be doing. Um, but the thick of it, and this is kind of what I wanted the takeaway to be, is building a business costs money. And it costs money independent of what you have going on at work. So if your job, that if you're nursing to pay bills, you're going to have to understand that you're going to keep nursing to pay bills and keep learning and keep taking those opportunities that your institution is giving you uh, to help you build a skill set that you can take with you as an entrepreneur, but you can most certainly do both because there are many of us out here doing both. And but what about when you feel like you're not like at your, you're not able to do your best, you know, like, oh, if I had more time, time, I could mm -hmm. do this. You know, like, I really just feel like if I just had, you know, more time or a few more days out of the week, I could really level up my business like how do you deal with that um well i'll tell you one of the ways i personally have dealt, dealt with it but this is like three and a half years into business is going part-time so i work part-time um at my job because it allows me greater flexibility to do exactly what you were talking about which is be able to travel for events be able to work more at home or to create and to fill orders but it's a labor of love. There's no path that I'm going to say, whether you're being pulled away or not, are you covered financially? That's a, that's why, that's the number one reason why nurses get second jobs because they want travel money. They want Christmas money. They want this money. Starting a business is not going to start you out at zero. You're not going to start a business with zero costs, zero inventory, zero. You're going to need money for supplies. You're going to need money for, you know, maybe a how to or, or something that's going to help you get going. And that's the mentality that I want people to kind of embrace. It's going to take money. It'll take money and it's going to take either your nursing money or your overtime money or your savings. If you're really passionate, it is okay to be comfortable working and exchange for your time to be paid well for your time because nurses typically is a profession that does pay well at the bedside. Most markets do pay well enough for you to live. So if you're talking about a transition, it's it's a mental shift, but it's also a financial shift. You will not, unless somebody's gifting you or granting you 10 or $15,000 to just get going that you don't have to pay back, your investment's gonna come from someplace. <laughs> it's gonna come from someplace. So, you know, you have some nurses that have husbands that are doing the majority of the lifting financially, and they can just work and travel and take a bunch of money and open up a consulting business or do something. And that's a, that's wonderful. It's it's still a nurse using her skills for money and that money and starting a business with it. So that's completely fine that the avenues are vast. I mean, for us to transition, we can kind of do whatever we whatever we want to do. I am come from the mindset that it is not feasible from day one for most individuals to be able to count down from 12 months to say, okay, I'm working, I'm walking away from my job because, mm. because of this new thing that I'm doing. Most, right. the average nurse who just has that passion for creativity will be working at work. She's going to be momming at home. And she's got to be doing her business on the on the side or 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 they're going to coexist. And that's basically kind of where. So it's OK to embrace what you're learning. I've, I've just learned so much about uh, even customer service. And, I, you know, we, as we talked before, I talked about the importance of taking those trainings 
and taking those trainings with you, customer service trainings and how to speak to people, how to put out fires, you know, customer services, making the, you know, keeping people happy. I've, I think we just surpassed a thousand views on my Etsy store. One thousand. And I could probably count on three fingers the amount of three star reviews I have. Everything else is a four or five. And I have a lot to repeat customers. So creating that experience is something that you do learn at the best side. At least you're supposed to be learning. And implementing yeah. the customer service piece, that's probably one of the biggest, easiest ways that you can use your job at the best side and take that skill and translate it into your business. It's how to treat people. Make sure you all go check out Anisha's Instagram as well as her website, Reflections by Zaina. I'll have everything linked down below. And if you're watching this in February 2020, all of her stethoscopes and healthcare related gifts are 20% off. Um, so definitely go check that out. Let us know what you think in the comment section. What do you feel about this topic? Do you feel like that nurses should be leaving their jobs to do their own business or should you do both? Just tell us what you think about it. And also, let us know, is there something that you want to do creatively outside of nursing um, that will fulfill you, you know, creatively um, and that you might be able to make money off of? And if you're already doing something, let us know in the comment section. As always, thank you so much for watching. Peace.